potential expansion event can be expected in short order. In other words, a supernova. The sun is nearing critical mass. Surface solar activity will grow in violence and frequency, followed by expulsion cycles, which can be expected to include Earth in their telemetry. Increased magnetic reconnection, SID, sudden ionospheric disturbance. Morning, Dr. Shepard. I was just wondering if you got those gravitational field disturbance reports. You know, the ones you asked Dr. Richardson for? Unfortunately, I did. Excuse me? They were fine, Jenny. Just, I crossed uh, the analysis against our data from Moscow. Everything seemed in order, but I'd be happy to come over there. I'll call you back. Okay. Uh, Jenny. Thanks for the help these past few months. Be good to yourself. So. That's him. We just picked him up. He's on the move. Let's go. in US dollars, another 25 in euros, and 5,000 in gold coins. Are you certain you want to exchange this much currency, Dr. Shepard? Better call this in. Gotta go. We're here at Memorial Fountain near downtown where the mayor launched his re-election campaign only last week. But events here today have given new meaning to the term lame duck. Apparently, these ducks took a wrong turn on their way north to the Mediterranean, ending up here for this unprecedented visit. Ornithologists believe that ducks migrate using electromagnetic patterns in the atmosphere, but those patterns have apparently been disrupted. In fact, erratic migrating behavior has been reported all over the continent. The cause? Sunspots. They're clear. All right, that'll be the lead-in, and we'll do some B-roll and then I'll do the wrap-up. Hey, 
Hey, lay off the ferret gamos. Like to make some easy money. Speaker's Corner Coffee Shop. Check this. Shepard? It's my birthday. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, pretty cool. I missed you so much. Mm. Oh, God. I thought... I'm sorry, I forgot that they were starting the installation this week. It's loud. That's the idea. We, uh, we really need to have that on during the day. It makes me feel better, especially if I'm here alone. Just a few more days. Just a few more days. We will never be able to hurt you again. into the office today. You just got back. Well, I promised Handy an update on the meeting when I got in. I won't be late. Haley's recitals tomorrow night. Yeah, I haven't forgotten. You'll pick us up? Well, if I get held up, I'm sure Teresa could do it. Chris. I'm not going to miss it. Like you did the last one? Honey. A solar probe goes online in less than a month. I, things have been just going crazy at the shop. Things are always crazy at the shop, and it's always you who has to calm things down. It's my job. It's what I do. I'll get it. Austin Shepard gets to spend all his time staring at the sky while they send you, a brilliant astrophysicist all over God's creation, putting out fires. Look, Austin Shepard's a genius. I'm just lucky to be carrying his water. They don't deserve you, Chris. We could be happy back in the States. You could teach, do research, just like you always wanted. This, uh, this isn't about Austin Shepard or the solar probe or me being underappreciated, is it? All I want is to feel safe. 
I just want us all to feel safe. I will never let anything happen to you or Haley. Never. I don't understand. When we spoke on the phone, you said there wouldn't be a problem. We had an appointment for two. I know, I remember, and I'm really sorry, but he's just not answering his phone. We made this appointment over a week ago. If I don't get this into editing before the weekend, we won't make air. Uh, would you just excuse me for a moment? Hi. Welcome back. You haven't seen Dr. Shepard anywhere, have you? Just, I've got the British equivalent of Barbara Walters huffing and puffing like that, and she's really starting to piss me off. Dr. Richardson? Laurie Stevenson, Channel 7. I covered your solar probe news conference last month. How are you? Uh, jet lagged. We're doing a feature on the recent sunspot activity. And Dr. Shepard promised an interview at 2, and it's now almost quarter to 3. We'll do whatever we can to help you find it. Excuse me. Looks like they've misplaced a Nobel Prize winner. Um, so what do I tell Woodward and Bernstein downstairs? Just tell them to cool their heels for a little while. Maybe they'll get bored, go home. Christopher, Jenny sent the calculations of the gravitational field disturbances associated with asteroid 460. Your work is flawless. I wish it wasn't. We've all spent so much of our lives pondering the mysteries of the cosmos, but none of us could say what we would do if we only had one week left to live. Bon voyage. Chris, I need to see you. My office right now. Good news, Chris. I'm assigning you to the Solar Physics Conference. You'll be representing us as lead scientist on the Solar Probe. Uh, Austin Shepard is lead scientist in the Solar Probe. Dr. Shepard has disappeared. And you are? Special Agent Delgado, National Intelligence Organization. Long way from home. My associates, Agent Bot, Agent Means. Internal Security Bureau. We're cooperating on Dr. Shepard's case. What case is that? Well, Austin took an unscheduled trip out of the country this morning, Chris. Any idea where he went? Looking for a good curry? selling some of the research protocols for solar probe to other parties. Uh, Austin. Before Dr. Shepard left this morning, he emailed five colleagues. 
all astrophysicists, none of whom has anything to do with the solar probe project, and all of whom are scheduled to be at the solar conference tomorrow. He emailed me this morning. Saying? Not that it's any of your business, but he was thanking me. For some information I compiled for him regarding a planetesimal he was interested in. Asteroid 460. Nothing to do with the solar probe. Do you think that's what the other emails were about? I don't know. You're the spooks, you tell me. Dr. Shepard's message is self-destructed after being read. No footprint, very sophisticated. We know who they were sent to, but not their contents. Now, why would he do that? I have no idea. Chris, they need to know what was in those emails. Well, then they can ask whoever received them. Oh, I get it. So this is why I'm going to the conference? You'll be wired with a surveillance device. No one will know. I will know. Dr. Richardson, if Dr. Shepard is innocent, if he's merely out for a joyride looking for a good curry, fine, no harm, no foul. But if he's shopping solar probe protocols to parties outside of our consortium, then that is a matter of national security. International security. The scientists in that conference are doing research that could benefit all of mankind. I can't walk in there like some spy. There isn't a choice in this, Chris. You're leaving. Tonight. stuck a whole spy module on the Hubble without NASA ever knowing. I didn't believe it at the time. Why would the NIO be interested in Austin's work? Unless Solar Probe has some function we haven't been told about. But you're the project manager. You'd know if there are any other functions, wouldn't you? Whatever Austin was working on, its twin would be down here. Internal systems ops creates a shadow file of everything entered into the SPL network. Everything? scrolling all communication between Dr. Shepard and any scientist, either on our network or outside of it. And? Well, I've got everything up until five days ago. After that, there's nothing. You want to hear something even weirder than that? What? It's all gone. All of it. All of his notes, everything about the solar probe, all the data I sent him regarding the planetesimal. Everything from the last few days is gone. Why would you do that? Austin, what the hell are you doing? No, 
Now there's something you don't see all the time. Yes. It started. have no explanation for this tragic animal behavior, but scientists at the International Wildlife Federation continue to insist that there's no relationship between the instance here and the spontaneous zebra stampede which killed 30 children in a remote canyon village, or the massive locust storms in Hamal. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. What are you doing? There's a problem at the lab. Austin Shepard is missing. Missing? He was supposed to go to the uh, solar symposium, and no one can find him, so I have to go in this place. When? You're gonna miss Haley's recital, aren't you? No, no, Brooke. Honey, you cannot live like this, okay? Yourself sick. You didn't see the look on his face, Christopher. He enjoyed what he did to those people. He was excited by it. Yeah, yeah, and thanks to you, he is never going to have the chance to do it again. He said he would come for us, for Haley. How? He, you know, he's in jail. They got him locked up. They're never going to let him go. Teresa's here all the time. This, uh, the security system, it goes directly to the police. I got the guys from the lab, the security, they just drive by here all night. You are safe. Haley's safe. I wish we'd never come here. Pig slob for a pig. <laughs> He's scheduled to speak at the symposium tomorrow. Yeah, he should have checked in already. Really? Well, I'm told that the university uses your hotel exclusively for visiting professors and guest speakers. 
And you're certain Dr. Austin Shepard hasn't checked in? Okay, thanks. Cool. Working late? Harry, how are you? Oh, I got a hammer right. How's the sunspot thing going? It's going. Don't make a meal out of it. You're not in Bosnia anymore. It's filler, fluff, okay? Fluff, right. On Tuesday, I want you to cover that uh, puppy adoption thing at the nursing home. Wait a minute, you said you'd put me on the coal execution. Oh, sorry, I uh, gave that to Kim Haddonfield. Well, I thought she'd be more... Hot. Sensitive. I'm sending Carl with her. Yeah, you, uh, you can take the new kid with you to the nursing home. Puppies. Right. I'm on it, Chief. You're not on the network anymore, kiddo. Try to remember that. Convicted rapist and serial killer Grant Cole will be transferred from state prison to the facility in Brownstown where his execution is scheduled to be carried out. Cole's attorneys have continued to file motions for a stay of execution, but those appeals have been Mom! unsuccessful. Come on, we're gonna be late. Go get in the car, honey. I'll be right behind you. Next time you go playing in the alley, Sophia, you have to wear your sneakers, okay? Doctor Corey, okay. Four, two, three, one, seven. Very good. Doctor Corey, four, two, three, one, seven. Hello, Doctor. Well done. So, you doing anything tonight? since the first time I kissed you. Oh, God. I totally forgot. I'm so sorry. Marianne. What happened? Everything's just started going crazy. Equipment shut down, everything. Power's out all at once. We've got to be a respiratory distress here. Believe it or not, this baby has a six millimeter wide angle lens in it. The mic is multi-directional. Just talk normally and we'll see and hear everything. Oh, by the way, it also works just like a pen. Great. You're not doing anything wrong. Not in your world, maybe. I can't believe how good she's gotten. She's so proud you came. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. <laughs> Bingo. Shepard?
Lord Shepherd. This is Dr. Austin Shepherd's residence at 273 Old Willow Road. And it's about 9.30 p.m., August the 29th. As we can see, somebody's been in here looking for something. And as eccentric as Dr. Shepherd is known to be, it's a good bet he wouldn't trash his own home like this. So far, there's no sign of any foul play. But then again, there's no sign of Dr. Shepherd either. Jenny, Laurie Stevenson, Channel 7. How do you know where I live? I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, I can't talk to you. Jenny, I think Dr. Shepard's in trouble. Skipper. Skipper? That's what Dr. Shepard called the porcupine. God. He used to hang out on the back porch all the time. Oh. When did you last see Dr. Shepard? Well, I saw him this morning. At least, I saw him on the phone. There's a T1 line direct from the observatory to SBL. Has anyone been out there? Nobody goes over there without a personal invitation from Dr. Shepard. You guys don't have the slightest idea where he is, do you? And from the looks of his place, you're not the only ones looking for him. Doesn't that concern you? We should go out to his observatory, Ginny. We should go out there and check on him. What if he's hurt? I'm going out there. You know, it's a four-hour drive. So? Well, you'll never get past security. A magnetic storm that originated from the sun gave people around the globe a rare treat last night and gave cell phone providers and satellite channels like ours headaches. Researchers from leading universities were both awed and caught off guard by the length and size of this latest magnetic storm. As one researcher said, it reinforces how little we actually know about our sun. But outside of some minor inconveniences last night, scientists tell us to expect that over the next few days, the magnetic storms will gradually subside. Scientists are now saying a series of electromagnetic pulses are responsible for the havoc experienced in telephone, television, and radio transmission all across the Southern Hemisphere. The Institute for Atmospheric Analysis blames the pulses on the normal apex of an 11-year cycle of sunspot activity. And now... Hi, Jenny. Hi, we're just picking up some papers for Dr. Shepard. Sure, drive on. Hi, Jenny. From October to November 2003, more than a dozen solar storms, including the most powerful ever recorded, erupted from the face of the sun, sending blast waves in every direction. Eruptions so powerful that billions of tons of electrified gas at speeds of up to five million miles per hour shot into space, the fastest ever recorded. Fortunately, these blasts were not aimed directly at Earth. Austin wouldn't send out such an email if he wasn't sure. It just doesn't make sense. Something is wrong. Well, you've seen the equations. Numbers don't lie. Look, just because we are unable to find error in his calculations, 
does not necessarily mean his conclusion is correct. There is a mistake. There is something we do not see. You are in denial, my friend. Gentlemen and lady. Dr. Richardson, we were not expecting you to attend. Dr. Richardson, where is Dr. Shepard? Austin has uh, been delayed. Delayed? There's too much coincidence. Something's not right. There's garbage on this bandwidth. Let's get it together, guys. I'm sorry. Those sunspots are affecting our equipment. Wait a second. They're on the move. Sergeant, isn't there something you can do about all this interference we're getting? No, I'm afraid not. You know, I suggest you get all your people on hard lines. Anything over satellites iffy at best. That last magnetic storm knocked out two DOD communication birds and about 50% of the uh, commercial satellites that are up there. Really? Oh, yeah. Joint Chiefs have ordered that whatever satellites we have that can still be moved be put into a geosynchronous orbit. We're going to hide them behind the planet, try to protect them from any more direct hits like we had last night. Let me show you something we got from SPL. Whatever magnetic waves aren't absorbed by the Earth just kind of flow around it. Envelop it like a blanket. You know, they lose some of their juice, but a really big one's gonna knock out everything anyway. Joseph, please. Are we not being a little paranoid? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Where's our good friend, Austin? Austin's missing. I think he's missing like Ibrahim, yes. What about Ibrahim? Suicide. At least that is what we are being told. <laughs> Ridiculous. This is like old Soviet Union. S-S-S-A-L. Every death of scientist, suicide. Hurry, Joseph, what are you trying to say? That, that he was murdered? First Ibrahim, now Austin. That is the same old story. KGB, CIA, NIO, they're all the same. They only want control. But why Ibrahim? Why would they want to hurt him? Because of what Austin told him. Because of what Austin told all of us. What did he tell you? You better sit down, mate. Dr. Shepard's plan for a solar probe was to investigate the sun's core gravity. This algorithm here is a formula for hydrogen conversion to helium by nuclear fusion. Sure, that would have been my guess. It's the process of the sun's core that creates the heat. Now that's all well and good. What I do not understand is how that relates to this which would seem to indicate some sort of breach in the corona through the photosphere and into the chromosphere. Hmm. What caused the breach? Well, we're not quite sure, but Austin has always thought that the sun is far older than we've imagined. That's yeah, just a hypothesis. The solar probe was built to explore that assumption. Save the rocket fuel, Christopher. It is settled. I am not convinced. If Austin is right, and we've been wrong about the age of the sun, so what? If I'm reading this correctly, Austin's convinced that this breach is just the beginnings of a process that will result in a... A supernova. We. Oui. The end of life, as we know it. But our esteemed colleague, Joseph, doesn't seem to agree with Austin's calculations. There is too much we do not know about star maturity and death. Don't tell me to talk. Look. Look, right here, he is making an assumption about core gravity. Where'd he get this assumption? 
There's something wrong with it. The assumption must be correct, Joseph. Everything that follows is happening. Interference with communications. Anomalous animal behavior. A breakdown of the magnetosphere. Something is wrong. I feel it. Right or wrong, we have an obligation to consider. What are we going to tell the public? You tell the public nothing. My name is Special Agent Delgado, National Intelligence Organization. I must ask you all to come with me now. In the interest of security, you will be escorted to a secure location where you will be debriefed. About what? Debriefed. Representatives from your governments will be available to discuss the situation with you. I have no interest in going to a secure location. Oh, I second that. I'm afraid it's not a matter of choice. Dr. Richardson, perhaps you can explain the seriousness of our intentions. This was never about stolen protocols, was it? Chen is locked. Dr. Chenislav? We're here to help you, sir. I know you're upset. But please stay calm. Let's talk about this. No! 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 Delgado! Delgado, no! Damn it! Hang on! Hold on! Hold on! Take the others to the van. Yes, ma'am. I want Dr. Shepard's numbers put through a ringer. I want to know what you think these calculations mean and whether you agree with his conclusions. No assumptions, people. No dressing things up. Nobody eats, nobody sleeps. I want the worst case scenario. And let's hope there's a flaw. How long is this going to take? As long as it takes. We have to get this out. Get what out? Excuse me, sir. I realize I'm just a civilian here, but I think the potential end of the world is important news. Potential? Potential? We don't know anything. Ginny seems fairly certain. With all due respect, three months ago, Ginny was cleaning out her dorm room. No offense. If I were in your position, Miss Stevenson, I'd wait until there's a bit more informed analysis before making a fool of myself and risking what's left of my career. Sorry. 
I'm sorry. That was cruel and uncalled for. No, I'm used to it. Besides, you may be only three months out of your dorm room, but I bet you know more than all those wonks put together. So, what are you going to do? What would you do? I... I know what I'd do. I'd go find that gorgeous boyfriend you love and spend every possible second in his arms. Now, you've got great veins, so it's easy to hook you up. The needle goes in really slowly. That's when the warden signals for the curtains to be open. So you can see all your guests staring at you, strapped in like an animal. Now you can see everything, hear everything, feel everything. But you can't move. But the best part is the stuff that stops your heart. Nice and slow. You can feel every last drop of blood draining from your brain. Guess what? You're awake. She was the best horse I could ever imagine. Our master called her sweet, because that's what she was. Every time she saw him, she would neigh and prance until finally he'd come and stroke her. And then he would look down on me and he'd say, lucky boy you are, Black Spot, to have a mom like this. I have everyone from the Joint Chiefs to the President's Chief of Staff breathing down my neck. I want those people secured and debriefed as soon as possible. I understand, sir. We'll be en route within the hour. Sir? Sir? You're breaking up, sir. I'm in the air in 15. Be ready when I get there. Let's go. Hey, we're not criminals. Don't be treating us this way. The Australian government's not going to be very happy about this. And you still have not told us what happened to Joseph. You will be briefed when we arrive at our location. Don't you want to know what's going on here? All I want to know is that you're secure for your debriefing. That is my job. That's what I intend to do. And where do you intend to do this? This will all go a lot easier if you just cooperate. What about my family? I'd like to make a phone call. Let them know that I'm all right. It goes for all of us when we get to the location. Could you at least take the handcuffs off? We'll approach the bird from the side! Come on, come on! Up, up. Uh, go all the way to the other side. Strap in.
really think these are necessary at this point? It's not like I'm going anywhere. This is Three Dragon, Game Ball ETA, approximately 2300 hours. Have we got a bad rotor? Something with the electronics. Everything's overloaded at the same time. What's happening? I've got to put us down. Strap in. Give me a treat pack read. Negative. It's gone. Switch to the Omega. Disregard the flare. We'll bring her in visually. Hold on. It's the navigation, isn't it? The radiation. Phoenix 3, Dragon. We're going down. We're OK. We're OK. Stay on this heading. There's a highway in two clicks. Phoenix 3, this is Dragon. We have full-scale electronic overload in multiple systems. Mayday, mayday, we are going down. At south, 124 degrees, 33 minutes, 25 seconds. East, 80 degrees, 20 minutes, 15 seconds. I don't see it. There's no highway. It should be right in front of us. Ah, we're going in hard. Magnetic storm took out air traffic and computerized navigation systems worldwide. Okay. How do we avoid this from happening again? You gotta ground all air traffic worldwide until the magnitude of this storm subsides. That would strand millions of people in times of an international crisis. We have no choice, Deputy Miller. Okay, gentlemen. Come with me. I need the Deputy Chief of the Secret Service. Uh, this is Miller, 916 Apple Delta. I am activating National Crisis Management Plan Zulu. Uh, the President and his staff need to be informed of this, and arrangements to secure them will need to be set in motion. Yes. Code Phoenix. No, no, I understand. Right. Inform the sergeant of the guard that this facility is to be locked down within the hour. All personnel with an easy transit are to be recalled. Everyone else is to be ignored. Have your MPs fully armed with orders after the hour mark to deny access to anyone else. Words, warning shots, then they must do what they must. Yes, sir. Shepard's predictions for phase one and phase two are by and large correct. And we believe that phase three has already begun. We're recording coronal mass eruptions unlike anything we've ever seen before. Plasma flares from these eruptions are moving at four, five, six million miles an hour. That puts first impact at 12 to 15 hours. What happens when they hit? I can't be sure. Well, I have to go on other computer scenarios. Let's hear them. We'll be bombarded with superheated CME material. English, please. Think fireballs, I suppose. In other words? Yeah. They'll burn themselves out before impact. Hell, that's a positive. Yes, but 
We are in uncharted territory here, Colonel. There is also the possibility that the plasma will actually feed on the oxygen in our atmosphere. To put it bluntly, the sky could catch fire. Colonel, I was wondering about our arrangement. I'd like to prepare my people, get them ready to leave. Just sit tight, Handy. Make sure no one leaves. You'll be hearing from us. Make a really good drink. You make a really good drunk. The perfect relationship. I've got a secret, you know. I never would have guessed. We're all going to die. No big secret there. No, 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 no. Everybody. Soon. It doesn't matter what's coming next. Only matters what you're doing now. Lechaim. Denver International, 747, overshot the runway by 1,200 yards. Pilot managed to put it down on cattle pasture. Instrument malfunction. Peking, same thing, only they weren't so lucky. 217 dead. Also, Pittsburgh, Bombay, Morocco, plus the thing in Paris, the Tokyo blackout, it's worldwide. Excuse me. Nothing. Not at those coordinates, sir. How long since the mayday? Eight hours, sir. Widen the search. Mm -hmm. I want survivors. Or bodies. Take it easy. As far as I can tell, nothing's broken, but I'd still go slow if I were you. Like I said, What about the others? Didn't make it. Did you pull me out? Yeah. Thank you. Let's hope they can find my signal. I gotta get home. I... Sit down, Richardson. Look, my wife and daughter are alone. They need me. There's gonna be a town around here somewhere. Christopher. My orders still stand. Let me ask you a question. You got a husband? Kids? I didn't think so. But since you ask, I have a mother and a sister. Don't you want to see them again? I intend to. Then listen very closely to what I'm about to tell you, because in a very short time, weeks, maybe months, this entire planet is going to start to boil like an egg in hot water. That's not going to leave you much time for a family reunion, is it? But you could be wrong, right? Let's put it this way. I don't think your orders are going to matter anymore. In fact, erratic migrating behavior has been reported all over the continent. The cause? Sunspots. This sunspot activity 
has surpassed all recorded historical levels, causing communication blackouts, freakish electrical storms, and even the recent air disasters we've been seeing across the country and around the world. According to renowned astrophysicist Dr. Austin Shepard of the Space Propulsion Laboratories, we're in for a lot worse. He's not only predicted recent events correctly, but his research suggests that events are building towards a possible cataclysmic supernova of the sun. What the hell? Thanks, Laurie. We'll have more on this story tonight at 11. Don't go away. Tony Summers has his review of Victoria's Secret Lingerie Show next. And we're clear. Are you out of your mind? I wish I was. You have no corroboration, no verification. Would you have added if I had? Get lost in the shuffle down there, G. Hey, G, stay with him. Hey. Hey. What happened? A commuter jet lost its navigation systems and crashed into a hotel near the airport. Metropolitan can't handle the casualties of sending the rest here. Look, we need to talk. It's all happening. I mean, everything he predicted, plane crashes, everything. It's all happening. What are we supposed to do? Will it be soon? I don't know. I'm so sorry. Emergency room full of people out there who need me. And uh, until it's my time, that's where I'm going to be. at the gates of the federal prison at Pretoria, where convicted serial killer Grant Cole is being trapped. They say he never checked in. Yeah, I've called the conference center. He was registered. People saw him there. Look, I want to speak with Joe Handy. Okay, well, what about Ginny McKillop? Hello? Hello? I'm sure he's all right, Mom. Sure he is, honey. It's just these phones and this crazy interference, right? He'll call in. Let us know he's all right. I'm gonna go practice. Good girl.
Dr. Ibrahim. I was told that you were dead. I think we are all dead, my friend. Not yet. Harlan Williams, Dr. Richardson. I'm glad to see you're safe. Delgado. Have a seat. I think I'll stand. You know, I think we owe you a bit of an explanation. Yeah, just a bit. You know, I don't want to waste time with a lot of introductions. Suffice to say, these men and women were gathered with great difficulty. And with great effort, I might add. To evaluate Austin Shepard's theories about the current unanticipated solar activity. You mean the end of life as we know it? We were hoping you could shed some new light on his calculations. Let's put it this way. Even if Austin's calculations are partially incorrect, life on this planet is about to change radically. The polar ice caps may melt. The atmosphere may be stripped away. If that happens, exposure to UV alone will kill us. Make no mistake, a mass extinction event will happen. It's out of our control, people. We need to warn the public. Maybe throw up a prayer. I don't put much stock in blind faith, Dr. Richards. Fortunately, I'm not alone. some very important people in some very important countries asked a very important question. If civilization was faced with annihilation, and by civilization they meant us, Christopher. The educated, the skilled, the trained. If somehow we faced extinction, could any semblance of a civil society be regenerated? And the answer at the time was quite clearly, no. So the concept of plausible survivability was developed, and back in the 50s, that meant canned food, water, and maybe an eight by 10 concrete cubicle. As you can see, we've come a long way since then. Phoenix, one of several self-sustaining, self-contained facilities all over the world. Designed to sustain up to 10,000 people for up to 15 years. Engineers, scientists, doctors, teachers, farmers, very egalitarian. The lists are updated constantly. All kinds of people, Christopher, except for lawyers, of course. A Noah's Ark for the new millennium. Each facility houses a DNA library of over 250,000 species of plants and animals. This one is responsible for the live maintenance of over 700. If only one third of these facilities survive, Mankind could still emerge with enough DNA, enough genetic diversity to safely repopulate the planet. That's something. Assuming there's a planet left to uh, emerge too. Well, uh, frankly, supernova would definitely overwhelm our preparations. We've been betting on something a bit less apocalyptic. Nowhere else to go but up. Austin Shepard's projections are elaborately complex. Help us out here. See if you can find any flaws in his work. Well, what makes you think that I would ever agree to participate in this madness? Well, you have no choice. Ever since you took a job at SBL, you've been on the list. What about my family? I'll look into it. What about you? You one of the lucky ones, too? Agent Delgado has the necessary skills. What about your mother, your sister? They got the 
necessary skills. You can't do this. Look around you. The trigger's already been pulled. National Emergency Directive. It's been on the books for years. Every president, whether he's aware of it or not, is bound by it. The same is true in at least two dozen other countries. Martial law. Think of it as the draft. What about the other people? How do you think they're going to react when they find out? We don't advertise, Christopher. Tell me this is a bad joke. You don't believe that crap. It's about the common good, the hive, and the survival of it. Don't be foolish, Christopher. Step away from the vehicle, sir. Right. best you can do, Andy. After the last incident, we had to reboot a couple of retired commercial satellites. This is the best graphic we could accomplish with the data we received. You're lucky you're seeing this much. Old satellites plus this kind of event, not a formula for success. Hold your breath. Impact in five, four, three, two, one.
Well now, isn't this something? You're alive too, huh? Eh, well, yeah. The situation here, maybe, uh, you can. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the solution. <laughs> So, what now? Suppose we uh, find some transportation as soon as we can now, right? I mean, uh, you're in charge, you know, of your background. What's uh, I'll do anything you say, all right? Are you famous? I've heard quite a lot about you. And, uh, I tell you, I, I can do a few things, you know. I can hotwire anything, anything you tell me to do. It's just me and you, all right? <laughs> well, uh... We're doing well, considering the time crunch. The Phoenix compound is ready to be inhabited. We have a lock on 40% of our targets. Workable whereabouts on an additional 25. Even if we top out at that, we're good to go. My advice, we begin collecting immediately. Turn the moment we've dodged the bullet. Hold on. Williams. Gotta check your monitors again. Captain? Mr. Miller? What is this? It's a solar plasma injection. SPO says it's headed for Earth. What? It's solar material. It's a form of matter. It's unstable. We know very little about it. How much time? Minutes. Are the Phoenix complexes in the US, Europe, and Australia aware of this? Yes, sir, they are. Space Command satellites offline, sir. Without knowing where or when, we can't order evacuations. Oh, God help us. Section 3.